ఏంటి హోల్డ్ అంటుంది అది హోల్డ్ అంటే ఇది కింద పక్కన ఇది ఐదు కింద ఈ హోల్డ్ పక్కన హోల్డ్ గణపతిహే కవి కవీనాముపమశ్రవస్తమ్రహ్మణాం బ్రహ్మణస్వతనశృణ్వన్నోతిశ్రీదాలనం ఓం శ్రీ మహాగణాధిపతే నమ ృష్ణోపరమం పదం సదా పశ్యంతి పూరయ విరచక్షురాతం హసౌ ఎవ్రీబడి చేస్తుంది హరే రామకృష్ణ త్రీ టైమ్ హరే రామకృష్ణ హరే రామకృష్ణ హరే రామకృష్ణ ఓకే వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఎయిర్ మంత్ త్రీ వీక్స్ త్రీ వీక్స్ లాస్ట్ సండే ఐ వాజ్ హియర్ బట్ ఐ వెంట్ ఇన్ జిజర్సి జూరింగ్ ద వీకెండ్ I was not sure when I will be back, so I just cancelled the class. I ended up coming back on Saturday itself, but, but I couldn't reconvene the class, so we didn't have the class. Uh, Sachanka Garu was just giving me a feedback that another prediction that the class made together has come true. Apparently, sometime back, we saw his chart and told him that in the February time frame, there is a, there is a chance for job change. And he said that he got an offer that he could not refuse. So, congratulations to the class. Uh, we will continue our discussion on Narayan Dasha. I will tell you a new, a new technique basically for judging the Dasha in Narayan Dasha which, which gives consistent results. Uh, before I do that, do you have any questions so far? In uh, Narayan Dasha, in looking at uh, the divisional chart, yeah. uh, uh, we have to see that where that lord is there or uh, like i was not sure suppose narandasha starts from uh, spicy yeah uh, then in the case of evening jump to divisional chart say navamsha yeah so we have to we go and see where uh, from the rashi or uh, the lord of that house where it is uh, are you talking about the computation of narandasha no, 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 how to read uh, so how to read the narandasha yeah. so when software tells you that there is yeah, any narandasha running yes. in the dasamsha that's correct Okay. So, uh, you, you are asking whether you should take that as the Lagna? Or uh, we should take the Lord of that house as the Lagna? You don't take, you don't take either the sign or the Lord of the sign as Lagna. Okay. That sign is basically the progression of the 10th Lord. For example, take the Shams Nara and Dasha. Okay. How did we get the Shams Nara and Dasha? We took the 10th Lord of the Rasi chart, which is the, See. what does 10th Lord show? It shows the intelligence that you are applying towards your work. So, it basically shows your work. the intelligent part of your work. So, you are taking that physical work that you are doing and then placing the tenth lord in the Dasyamsa chart and seeing the influences on him. So, you are progressing him. So, at any given point of time, the Dasyamsa and Arayan Dasha that is running right now, that will show the work that you are doing. So, you can't use that as Lagna and Jed, just like in the case of Rasa and Arayan Dasha. In the case of Rasa and Arayan Dasha, the narayan dasha sign is the progression of the lagna it is starting from lagna or seventh house so you take the narayan dasha sign as lagna and judge how various planets are placed but in the case of dasham sign narayan dasha the narayan dasha sign is not the lagna and even its lord is not the lagna it is simply the progression of the tenth lord so you take the dasham sign narayan dasha sign and you use that you use that to see what are the influences on his career at that point of time so that is that that the sign basically shows the work that he is doing so see what are the various influences and in a in a future class we will go deeper into the divisional charts and narayan dasha of the divisional charts for today and maybe a couple more classes we will just focus on the rashi chart and the narayan dasha of the rashi chart and today what i will do is so far 
we have been looking at the answer the in, in every Mahadasa and we have been judging the results based on the Dasha Pravesh Chakra. I will give you a new technique which which gives consistent results. So let me let me take my chart as example. April 4, 1970, 5.47, 13 p.m. Indian Standard Time and the place is Matri Patnam, India. 81 East 8, 10 North 10. So let us see, <coughs> let us see the Narayan Dasha of the Rashi chart. Let us see this or is it too small? Too small? Can you read it now? Okay. So, uh, first it will be a little bit tricky, but once you practice, practice the use of the rule, it will become clear. But in the beginning it will be a little bit tricky, so pay attention in the beginning. The rule is, see, we know that, suppose I am running Aries Dasha. We know that Aries has, Aries is, is capable of giving various results. For example, Aries is the 8th house. So it will give the 8th house results. And Lord of Aries is Mars. He wants 3rd and 8th houses. So it can give 3rd and 8th house results. Lord of Aries is in 8th house. So it can give 8th house results again. I mean, in this case it's the same house. But Lord could be in another house. So based on the sign, sign occupied by the Lord, there can be different results. Based on the houses owned by the Lord, there can be different results. Based on which sign it is, there can be different results. Based on which house it is, there can be different results. And moreover, this sign contains so many planets. And so many other planets are affecting it by Rashi aspect. So all those planets can give their own results. So you have like nine or ten different results that are possible in the Aries Dasha. You do any Dasha, you take any sign. For example, take Cancer Dasha. What are the results possible? You can get the 11th house result because it is the 11th house from Lagna. And you can get the results of 6th house because this large moon is in the 6th house. And you can get the results of Moon and Rahu because they are aspecting that sign. So there are there are these possible results, various possible results. And if you take, for example, Leo Dasha, you can get the twelfth house results because it is twelfth house from Lagna. You can get the tenth house results because it is tenth house from Aruha Lagna. You can get the seventh house results because its Lord is in seventh house from Lagna. The Lord of Leo Sun is in the seventh house. And you can get Ketu results because he is occupying that sign. You can get third house results because Ketu is the third lord and he is in that sign. And you can get all the results of all these planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Saturn and Jupiter because they all have Rasi Drishti, sign aspect on Leo. So, if you enumerate various possible results in the Leo Dasha, you have ten results. So, when will each particular result be experienced? All the results will not be experienced for the entire Leo Dasha, when is Leo Dasha? 2007 to 2012, the five years. Not every result will come in those five years. There will be one result that comes at the beginning, one result that comes at the end, one result that comes in a particular month. So we want to be able to find out exactly when each of those influences on the Narayan Dasha sign will give its results. So there are some rules for that. There are some there are some clear rules for that, and we'll go through those rules now. Yes, Ashwar, you have a question. When you said the different houses, like for example, as you said, the, we give um, result of the 7th house or 10th house or 11th house yeah. and so on. But they all correspond to different uh, aspects of things, like right? for example, if you are looking at the games, then he gives the 11th house result, so as far as games are concerned, yeah. of which word chapter you are looking, so it pertains to that aspect. It pertains to that aspect. So it's not that this, during that Leo Dasha, during that uh, Leo or Aries uh, Aries Dasha, you get these are the different results for different aspects, but not the different views on the same aspect. Right? It can be both. If, for example, you you, you are running cancer dasha, so you know that basically there are going to be some gains because it is the house of gains, 11th house. That is the dasha running. So in cancer dasha, there will be some gains. What kind of gains? Depending on which planets are affecting it because Rahu is affecting it. So there may be some Rahu gains, some gains from foreign sources, for example. So some games for me. Lottery also. Why lottery? Why lottery by Rahu? Lottery is not sharp. Sharp to many. 
See, Rahu is the significator of shock, but that's used in a negative sense. I'm the sense of using one of the gaining lottery. Maybe he'll get a heart attack or something. Okay. Usually when we talk about gains in lottery, gains in speculation, usually the houses are fifth house and eighth house. Eighth house is speculation and fifth house is emotional. So if fifth and eighth are involved with the, with the house of gain, then that can be a gain that is coming through speculation and gain that is unexpected. So it can be lottery or something similar. So, <coughs> so going back to your question, you can conclude that there will be gains from foreign sources mm -hmm. or because moon is affecting, there can be gains let's say in food business or something related to moon, maybe nursing business. So such business can be said, but at the same time, <coughs> the lot of the child is in the sixth house. So there can be some enmities. Whether the enmities have something to do with gains or not is a different matter. It may be for some gain. Yeah, the enmity may be for some gain. So the gain may be the root cause of everything else, but they can be totally different results. Yeah, there are two different aspects. So one is, as far as gains is concerned, it could have the effect of with these aspects. All the planets that are affecting right. it and all but the planets that are occupying it. But during the Dachar, <coughs> The, as far as enmity or uh, friendship or relationship is concerned, this will come into picture. So there are different aspects of it. There are different aspects. And there, there can be so many different aspects. Let's say Jupiter was there. Okay. So Jupiter is the, suppose Jupiter was in Cancer. He is the seventh lord. He is the fourth lord. So there can be gain of fourth house matters. There can be a new house. There can be a new car. And there can be a wife. I won't say new wife. I would just say <laughs> there can be a wife. So because seventh lord, if he is in the eleventh house, there can be a the person can get married. So, or the relation with the wife may be harmonious because seventh lord is exalted. And there may be a debilitated planet there. Let's say Mars is there and Mars is debilitated. So, there may be some negative results relating to whatever Mars shows in the chart. So, all I am saying is different results are possible. The eleventh house, depending on which planets are occupying it, depending on which planets are aspecting it, and depending on where its lord is, and who this lot is associating with, depending on all these parameters, there are 5 to 10 different results that are possible in each dasha. 5 to 10 totally different results are possible. So what I am saying is, I am going to give you some rules, apart from, the, uh, apart from using the normal antar dasha that we have been doing, some special rules to judge the results of dasha, to divide the dasha into some, some other artificial division, not the antar dasha, but some other division, so that you know exactly when each result will be experienced. So before we start that analysis, first there are some basics that you have to remember. The basics are, Parashara defines some signs as Shishodaya Rasi, and some signs as Prishthodaya Rasi, and some signs as Ubhyodaya Rasi. So what that means is, Shishodaya means Shisha Udaya. Udaya means rising, Shisha means head. So Shishodaya literally means head rising. So there are some signs that are Sishodaya Rati. And the Sishodaya Rati are, does anybody know the list? Anybody? Tell me. Kiran? Okay, then, okay. Uh, Taurus is a Sishodaya Rati. No, not Taurus. It is Taurus. Gemini. Gemini is a Sishodaya Rati. Good. Uh, Leo is a Sishodaya Rati. Virgo is a Sishodaya Rati. Libra is a Sishodaya Rati. Scorpio is a Sishodaya Rati. Then, Aquarius is a Sishodaya Rasi. These are the Sishodaya Rasi. Did you get the list? Yeah. Gemini, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Aquarius. These are the Sishodaya Rasi. And by the way, you can get this list in any book. Any, any astrology classic will have this list. Is there more because of any It must be there in my book. If yes. you go to the first chapter on the article, it must be there. This is something that everybody lists, including Parasara, Varas, Nira, everybody will list this in, in, in a book, but they won't tell you what to do with it. They will just tell you, these are Sishwada Rati. So what? What do you mean it rises with the head? When to say, when to find the rising? There are no clear hints anywhere in the classics on how to use this particular thing. But for now, just remember this. These are the Udayas. These are how science rise. Second thing, the Prishthwada Rati. They are Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Sagittarius and Capricorn. Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Sagittarius and Capricorn. These are the Prishthodaya Rasis. They rise with the back. Prishtha means back. 
Rise, rising means some people actually translate it as rising with the tail because opposite of head is tail, but literally Prishtha means back. So they rise with the back. And Pisces, that is the only sign that is left out. If you look at the two lists that I have given, Pisces is the only thing that is left out. So obviously that must be Ubhadai Rasi. It rises with both. It's confused. It doesn't know how to rise. So it rises, it rises in a very twisted way. It twists itself and rises with both back and head coming up at the same time. Maybe because the symbol is too fixed. Yeah. One is rising with the head, one is rising with the tail. Okay. So basically, this is how the signs will rise. Now, <coughs> what we do is, each Mahadasa, we divide into three equal parts for seeing when various incidences will give, give their results in a Dasa. We divide the Mahadasa into three equal parts. Okay? One part will give the results of, I'm not saying which part, but one of those three parts will give the results of the sign itself. And one part will give the results of the lord of the sign. And one part will give the results of various associations of the sign. The planets occupying it and the planets aspecting it by Rasi Drishti, sign aspect. So these, these are the three divisions, sign, lord and associations. And associations means conjunctions as well as aspects, sign aspects. So this is, this is how various results are given. Now, the order, the order of when, which third, which third will give which result. That is based on whether the sign is Sishwadaya or Trishwadaya. So if the sign is Sishwadaya, can you guess when the results of the sign will be given? In the, in the beginning or end? Very good guess. So for Sishwadaya Rasi, the results of the sign are given in the beginning itself, the first one third of the data. In Prishwadaya Rasi, can you guess? The last one third will give the results of the sign. And in Obhyodaya Rasi, middle. Both is also a good guess, it's actually middle. Because you can't, you can't have both, you, can't, you have to select one. Okay. <laughs> we are learning astrology the way of the parampara now. <laughs> so, in Obhyodaya Rasi, if, if the Dasha is of Obhyodaya Rasi, the middle one third will give the result result of the the sign. Uh, sir, yeah, the middle one third will give the results of the sign. Now, Lord of the sign. Lord of the sign. Lord of the sign, right? No, no. Sign. We are. We, sign come, sign we will come. To the we will come to the lot of the sign later. Right now, we are talking about first the results of the sign when they are given. They are given in the first one third for Vishwadaya Rasi, last one third for Vishwadaya Rasi, oh, okay. middle one third for Obhyodaya Rasi. So that so that is when the sign itself will give its result. Okay. Now, <coughs> the Lord, the Lord will now come and he will choose out of the two remaining, the Lord will choose when he will prefer to give his results. And the rule is, again see where the Lord is placed. Is the Lord placed in an Obhyodaya Rasi, Sishodaya Rasi or Prishthodaya Rasi? So the rule is, if the Lord is placed in Sishwadaya or Obhyodaya Rasi, if he is placed in Sishwadaya Rasi or Obhyodaya Rasi, he will, take, he will take the first available slot. If he is placed in Prishwadaya Rasi, he will take the last available slot. Because there are only two slots available now. One slot out of the three has already been taken by the sign itself. So Lord has two remaining. They can be first and third, they can be first and second, they can be second and third. We don't know which, but there will be two slots available. And Lord will come and take the first available slots out of those for Sishwadaya and Obhyodaya Rasi. And this is based on where the Lord is placed. On the other hand, if the Lord is placed in a Prishthodaya Rasi, he will, he will be lazy. He will want to give his results, his results at the end. So then the last results will come at the end, the last available slot. And obviously the remaining slots, we said three slots, and we have allocated two slots to sign and Lord. So obviously the remaining slot, whether it's the first or second or third, the remaining slot will go to excuse me, the aspects and conjunctions of the sign. Okay? So this is the broad division. Can you repeat the la last, uh, last one where the large okay. aspect is concerned? Like the large, large will take out of the two slots that are remaining, 
after you allocate one of the slots to the sign, out of the two slots that are remaining, Lord will take the first available slot, the earliest slot, if he is in Sishwadai Rasi or in Upjadai Rasi. And if he is in Pushwadai Rasi, he will postpone his results to the end. So he will take the last available slot. If sign takes two, means uh, if Lord will take one. Yeah, he if it is Pushwadai, he will take three. Yeah. And let's say sign took one. And if the Lord is in Sishwadai or Upjadai, he will take two. If he is in Pushwadaya, he will take three. Yes. And let's say sign took three, three. because it was Pushwadaya. Yes. Then Lord will take one or two. Mm -hmm. If he is Sishwadaya, he will take one. Yes. If he is Pushwadaya, he will take two. two. So that is how it works. Okay? <coughs> so this is one rule. And the next rule is... Uh, for the third... Uh, the slot that is remaining, no. that will be... Yeah? Uh, for the Lord, the thing. The yeah. Pushtod, when he is in Pushwadaya. Uh, is it possible to be in the third slot? Also? Yeah, no. yeah. yeah okay. It depends on which slots are available. Which slot? If he is in Pushtadaya, he will want to take the slot, the last slot that is available. If one and two are available, he will take two. If two and three are available, he will take three. If one and three are available, he will take three. And what about the other one, Sishwadaya? Uh, the Lord is in Sishwadaya Rati. Then, the then he will take the first available slot. The third is not there. Uh, third, never, never there. Yeah. Yeah. No, third. Can happen with, uh, no, if the uh, he said if the Lord is in Sishwadaya, yeah. then so third the Lord can never give the result in third. Be one two or one or two. One or two, depending on which one sign took. If sign took one, he will be he will give in two. If sign took two, he will give in one. <coughs> if sign took three, he will give in one. So it will be only one or two. It can never be three. Okay, okay. So the so what you have to remember is the sign and the Lord. They will choose based on whether they are Sishwadaya or Pushwadaya, to give in the beginning or to give in the end. And sign gets to choose first. So that is what you have to remember. Then you can derive everything else automatically. And now, the you can further subdivide the, the portion that is allocated to the aspects and conjunctions. The, the remaining portion, after sign and lot take their preference, the remaining slot is given to the aspects and conjunctions, right? So what you do is, look at all the planets, including Rahu and Ketu. Look at all the planets which are either occupying that sign or, con or affecting that sign. See how many planets are there. And it's a democracy now. If there are seven planets, divide that portion, that one third portion that you allocated to these associations into seven equal parts. If there are two planets, divide into two equal parts. If there are seven planets, divide in, if there are four planets, divide into four equal parts. So like that, divide that period into equal parts. And once you divide, Whatever part is left out for the association, okay. for the planets conjoining and aspecting that sign, whatever part is left out, it could be one or two or three, that part is divided into equal parts to share between all those influences. Let's say in my case, let's say Aries Dasha. Let's actually go through an example, it will become clear. Aries, is it Sishwadaya or Prashwadaya? Prishthadaya. So the last one third will give the results of Fine. Aries itself. So from 2003 April till 2007 April, this is the last one third because there are 12, 12 equal antardashas. So the last four antardashas must be the last one third. So this period will give the results of Aries itself. And now Lord. The Lord is, Lord of Aries is? Mars. Mars. Is he in Rasi or Prishthadaya Rasi here? He is again in a Pushtadai Rasi. So, out of the slots, first and second slots that are second. open, second. he will take second, second slot. So, the results of March will come from April 99 till April 2003. So, those, those, is it four years? Yeah. Those four years, you will get the results of March. And the first four years, 95 April till 99 April, during those four years, you will get the results of the left out, after taking sign and lot, the left out influence is associated. So planets occupying it and aspecting it. So they will give their results in those four years. No, not four planets. Let's count. First count the conjunction. Count the planets occupying Aries. How many? One, two, three, four. There are four planets. Don't include Mandi, Gurika, all these Upagrahas. Only planets. Okay? So, the, there are four planets conjoining that sign. And how many planets are, are aspecting that sign? 
Is sun aspecting it? No. no. Is Jupiter aspecting it? Yes. By Rashi Drishti? Yes. Only by No, Rashi. no. If you want, you can do relationships. Oops, whatever. Highlight Rashi. Aspected by this Rashi. And the so this Rashi is being aspected by this. Rashi. These three Rashi. So planets in those Rashi are aspecting it. Using sign aspect, not Rashi. 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 So, so, so Aries is being aspected by Moon, Rahu and Ketu. So there are seven planets. Four here and three here. So there are seven different influences that are coming in in that particular four year period. So what you can do is divide those four four years. Four years means roughly 48 months into seven equal parts. Roughly seven months each. Yeah. And then in one seven month period, moon results will come. Another seven month period, Rahu results will come and so on. And now to see the order yeah. in which those planets will give their results. The rule is simple. Look at their longitudes within their sign. Whoever is more advanced in the sign, they will give their results first. Whoever is less advanced in their sign, they will give their results later. In other words, look at the Karakatva. The Charakaraka, Atmagaraka is given higher priority than Matagaraka, then Bhartagaraka, then Matagaraka, then Putragaraka, then Pitragaraka, then no Matagaraka, Pitragaraka, and then Putragaraka, and then Nyatikaraka, and then Darakaraka. So look at the, you can, you can, you can find out the order of the longitudes by looking at the Karakatva, Sarkarakatva also. So if a planet is more advanced, it will give its results earlier. If a planet is less advanced, it will give its results later. For Rahu, we need to subtract. Right? Yes, subtract. It is basically 30 minus Rahu's longitude. Okay. We count the longitude of Rahu from the end of the sign because he is always moving backwards. Okay? Now, <coughs> so this is how you look at the various conjunctions and aspects. For example, Mercury is in Aries. So there are some results of Mercury that are given in Aries Dasha. There are various results that Mercury can give. And we, we, we will we will judge each of those parts later. But whatever results Mercury wants to give, he may give throughout the Dasha, but that particular small portion of nine, seven months, that will be the peak. That is when Mercury's results will, be, will basically reach their peak. And Venus portion again, that is when Venus results will reach their peak. And so on. So like this, you can find out, you can divide the one, the one third corresponding to association further to allocate different periods to each planet that is influencing. Okay? Now one more thing is, the, the, the one third corresponding to the last that can further be subdivided into four equal parts. <coughs> you divide the one third corresponding to the Lord into four equal parts. And the way you judge those four parts is, in the first part, in the first part he will give the planet, let's say the planet is benefit. This particular thing depends on whether the planet is benefit or male fit. The order in which those four slots get the result, that depends on the benefic, benefic or benefic nature of the planet. So first I will tell you about benefic planets. If the planet is benefic, he will first bother about where he is placed. He will be, if, if you take a nice person, what will he do first? If he comes to your house, suppose I wanted to fix something in my, in my apartment, there is a, in my house, let's say there is a problem and I wanted to complain to somebody about it and take their help in fixing it. I go to their house and let us say something is happening there and they need help. So I will first forget about my need and try to help them first, make sure that their problem is solved and then attend to my need. So that is the nature of benefit planets. Wherever they are, they want that place to be nice and well protected. So any benefit, the very beginning of his, his period, he will give the results of the house that he is occupying. He will try to take care of the house that he occupies. <coughs> so that is the first one fourth. The second one fourth, then he will, after taking care of his immediate surroundings and helping people immediately with him, he will then think of his actual responsibilities. Yeah, I have to fix my house. Then he will attend to that. So that is the houses owned by the planet. So houses owned by the planet, those results will come in the second one fourth. First one fourth is houses occupied by the planet. Second one fourth is houses owned by the planet. And third one fourth will be <coughs> excuse me, the yogas of the planet. 
the associations of the planet. If the planet is 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 basically let's say giving a Raj Yoga with some other planet, the result of that Raj Yoga will come there. If the planet is involved in a bad exchange, let's say, let's say ninth lord and eighth lord are exchanging, and that is a Dur Yoga. So the, if the planet is involved in Dur Yoga, the result will be given in that one fourth. So third one fourth will be various yogas of the planet. So any planet that the planet is associated, conjoining or exchanging houses or aspecting visual aspect, all those results will be given in the third one fourth. And last one fourth, the fourth one fourth, the fourth quarter. That will give the result of the state of the planet. Is he is he depressed? Is he proud? Is he angry? Is he ashamed? So there are various states. And is he in one house? Is he exact? Actually, I haven't done most of these avasthas so far. There are avasthas that you can, if you go to strength tab, if you go to other strength tab, and if you click on the middle window, you have this Nishol Pakabala. Amsha Bala, Vaisheshi Kamsha, all these things, right? Here there are two avasthas, basic avasthas and Sainari avastha. If you look at basic avasthas, you see, for example, in this case, Muni is dead, he is dreaming, he is peaceful, he is mischievous. So there are various states that are given to planets. So these, the results of the state that the planet is, is in, those results will be given in this quarter. And apart from, even though you don't know all these things, you at least know that if a planet is exalted, it is akin to being very proud, very excited, being very happy. And if a planet is debilitated, you know that it is akin to being depressed, sad, etc. And if a planet is in one house, it is akin to somebody who is peaceful, who is relaxed at his own house. And if a planet is in Molatrikona, it is akin to very formal. Somebody who is at his work, workplace and very formal, do his duties very sincerely and formally. It is not relaxed. It is very up to, uh, very type basically, but, but it will give us results. But the way it will give results is different, based on Molotikona or won't have. And exaltation is considered most powerful because he's excited there. It's like a favorite party, the exaltation sign of the planet. So, those results, whether the planet is in exaltation sign or debilitation sign or Molotikona or won't sign or in a friend sign or in an enemy sign, if a planet is in a friend sign, again that is good. If a planet is in enemy sign, that is bad. So all the results based on the state of the planet, based on the based on whether it's well placed or badly placed, friendly place or enemical place, all those things will come into being in the last quarter. So first quarter is the house is occupied, next quarter is house is worn, third quarter is yoga, fourth quarter is the avastha, the state of the planet. Now for malefic planet, this is for benefit planet. For malefic planet, it is reversed. If you, if you, if a bad guy has certain responsibilities and he goes to somebody's house, he doesn't care about whether all the things are being taken care of nicely in that house or not. He doesn't care about whether his own responsibilities are being fulfilled or not. The first thing he cares about is, is he happy or not? Is he sad or not? He is worried about himself. He is basically more, more selfish. Whereas benefit planet is very unselfish and he, he takes care of everybody. Benefit planets are more selfish. I mean, it is an analogy, not exactly. Don't, if you ever, Saturn comes before you or Mars comes before you, don't say you are selfish. They will not, they will not like it. So, I'm just giving an analogy. I'm giving an analogy. So, it is more. So, actually, if you tell Jupiter you are selfish, he won't care. He won't care. Oh, yeah, maybe. He will just walk away. So, so, males with planets are akin to selfish people. So, they will, they will try to, they will try, they, they will look, look, look after themselves first. So the first important thing is avastha, the state. So the first quarter will give the results of state, second quarter will give the results of yogas, because they want to be associated with everybody. They don't want to, whether you are doing your job or not, you are given a particular project, whether you are doing it or not is separate. You are project manager for a particular project. Is it going well or not is not, it doesn't matter. But are you having dinner with the CEO or not? Are you in the coffee room or you are chatting with your <laughs> vice president or not, that matters more than actually doing your job. So yogas are important. His own state is the most important thing. Then the yogas are important. And then he will worry about his responsibilities. And finally he will worry about the house he is occupying. The house, wherever he is placed, whether that house is being taken care of or not, that is at the bottom of his list. So that comes at the end. So basically the list has been 
rewards for melfic signs, melfic planets. And here I note, is moon benefic or melfic? Depends on where it is. Depends on? Chukla. No, association is for Mercury. Well associated Mercury is benefic. If Mercury is with Jupiter, he is benefic. If he is with Saturn, he is benefic. So depending on who he is with, he can change his colors. That is the that is the great thing about Mercury. He is totally flexible. He can be anybody. Mercury can be any planet. He can be Rahu, he can be Ketu, he can be Jupiter, he can be Saturn. He has that flexibility. Out of all the planets, it's only Mercury who can who is so flexible. So anyway, coming back to the point, Mercury can be benefic or malefic based on who he is with. And moon can be benefic or malefic based on whether it is Krishna Paksha or Jupiter Paksha. If the moon is increasing, he is benefic. If the moon is decreasing, he is malefic. So these are the broad rules. <coughs> benefic or uh, sun? Sun is malefic. Malefic, malefic. Yeah, yeah. We are not talking about functional nature here. Even Saturn can be a functional benefit. If somebody is born in, let's say, Ketagan Lagna, Saturn is a benefit for him. But we are talking about natural benefit and natural benefit. Whether the planet is Saumya or Kura, inherently good or inherently bad. So that's what we are talking about. Okay? Now, let us see some examples. Yeah, both both the houses. In that particular portion, he will give the results of both the houses. Okay. If the time period is very small, say one year, one year, yeah. one year. Then you may not care about all this. <laughs> just give yeah. all the results, you will be all set. <laughs> you may not care about this if it's just one year. Because if you divide into three parts, you get four months. And if you divide into four parts, every month. Every month. So, you, if you don't need that kind of, yeah, the Pravesha will also give you okay. annual chart. So you don't really need that kind of precision. But if you are looking at a 5 year or 10 year or here 12 years, so if you look at a 12 year data, you probably yeah. care about what, what exactly is going on. So let us take, take an example. Let us, let us look at this example and try to see what results are possible then. Actually, let me, let's go back to the previous data. Actually, by now you know what happened in my life when exactly, <laughs> but let us explain it using this tasha, not the other techniques that we have used. So, Sagittarius tasha. What is the first step in using the three parts rule? By the way, this rule is, the, this particular rule that I taught you is called three parts rule. Even though there is a four part thing also inside it, it's basically three parts rule. The last is fine. Sorry? The last is fine. The last is fine? Yeah. Yeah. Good, right. Why? Everybody followed it? When will sign give its result in this particular data? The Capricorn uh, is partial. Pardon me? The head drawing the back uh, rising to the end. Yeah. It's the end, right. So Sagittarius is back rising. It's, it's Prishthodaya. So the results of Sagittarius will come in the yeah. last month. Right. Right. And when will Jupiter's result come? Pardon me? First, Jupiter is in a head rising sign, Libra. So Jupiter's results will come in the beginning itself. So Jupiter will take the first slot, Sagittarius will take the last slot, and middle slot is given to the aspects, the various planets that are aspecting this particular sign. Okay? Now, let us see, let us go through them individually. Let us go through the, go through the first four dasha, first four under the chart. So this is Jupiter's result, right? Now let's further subdivide Jupiter's result. In the first under the what results will Jupiter give? In the second under the what results will Jupiter give? Third one, what will Jupiter give? Fourth one, what will Jupiter give? So let us go through that in detail. So Jupiter, is it benefic or malefic? Benefic. benefic. Sure? Confident? <laughs> Good. Lark <laughs> <Lark> is <laughs> So Jupiter is a benefit. So the first one fourth will give the results of Oh, no. No, no, no. The one uh, the, the house, right. Which house? Owned or occupied? So Jupiter will give the results of the house that he occupied in that particular Antarctica. So what kind of results are possible if what is the house that Jupiter occupies? Second. Second. Second house. So what will what is possible? 
wealth, 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 So the first one fourth, he will give the results of occupying house. Second one fourth, he will give the results of houses owned. In the next one fourth, he will give the results of yogas. If if at all there are any yogas. In the la in the last one fourth, he will give the results of his stay, whether he is he is he is excited or sad, etc. So we are applying that rule now. So in Libra and the Dasha, if at all any important event happens, it will be something like some money. But what kind of money? He is not. Any planet in the second house, he is giving his results in this 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 period because he is Sagittarius Lord. After all, this is Sagittarius Dasha. So whatever results he gives, basically he is Sagittarius Lord. But being the fourth Lord placed in the second house, that placement of the second house, those results will be given in this period. So some gain, some money, etc., relating to education, not relating to something else, because that is the theme of the whole Dasha. Sagittarius is the theme. So within Sagittarius, that is being is being the fourth lord in the second house. He can give some money coming relating to education. Real estate. For me. Real estate. What? 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 Real estate. Real estate is possible. Definitely, very good guess. I was too small to gain anything in real estate then, but definitely a good guess. Oh, in this case. Very good. Fourth house is not just education, because I was at that time 15 years old when the Dasha started. So I said education, but fourth house can also show mother, vehicle, real estate, so many things. So that is that is excellent. That is a good guess. So here, what happened in that particular one year was, in the tenth standard, basically there is an exam called National Talent Test Examination conducted by NCERT in India. So I took that exam and I was selected. They had two or three stages and then interview. And finally, they they basically give a scholarship. So I was selected for that scholarship for for so for the next several years. I don't remember how many years, but for a few years, I believe I got it even when I went to IIT. So it was. For the few years, four years or five years, they give you every month. They give you certain amount of money as a as a scholarship to aid in your studies. So I got that national talent set scholarship uh, from from an educational uh, government institute and CERT. So basically, that is the result of Jupiter being in the second house. So the next one fourth will be the result of occupied houses. So what results? What results will Jupiter give? He occupies. Sorry, not occupied. I'm sorry. The house is owned by him. He owns the fourth and seventh house. So, what are the results that will be given by fourth and seventh lord? Education itself. Marriage is possible. Seventh house is marriage. But all this is basically he is giving. He is getting this portion at all because he is the fourth lord. So something related to fourth, but it can be fourth or seventh. Some fourth or seventh house results relating to fourth house. Fourth house is the seed of everything because. Sagittarius is the fourth house. So some relations, some associations, getting getting to know some people, getting some friends in the, in the college because it's seventh lord and it's fourth lord also. So basically learning, studies, education, fourth house is education. So that is one possibility. Another possibility is it can be marriage also. I was I wasn't married but as the seventh lord he can give marriage also. So that that would be a good guess. Is welcome in the college. For me? I studied during that period. I was at a college called AP Residential Junior College. It was a government residential college in Nagarjuna Sagar. It was it was only for boys. So no no girls. So basically, that is there isn't anything special in that dasha. Basically, that period will be. Four thousand, seven thousand results. So a lot of getting to know a lot of people and studying, studying. Now the next answer to that is an interesting answer to that. He will give the results of his yoga. Yoga. Ah, does he have any yoga? Is he taking part in any yoga? Is Jupiter involved in any yoga with any other planet? <coughs> you are looking at only sign aspects. When we talk about yoga, yoga has come because of Dhadrishti also. Association. So, no aspects come into picture here. Pardon me? Not really aspects. This is yoga. Only yoga. Yoga, yeah. The yoga of Jupiter. 
So what are the yogas of Jupiter? He is the seventh lord. And he, he is the fourth lord. And he is aspecting all these planets. Jupiter is in Samsaptaka with all these planets. They are aspecting each other by gravity. So Jupiter has several Rajyogas. The fourth... For yogas, it is only Gradrashti. Yeah. So in this, this particular quarter, when I said the results of the yogas are given, this is basically yoga based on Gradrashti. There is a Guru Mangal Yoga, there you go. So Guru Mangal Yoga results will be given. Any other yogas? Yeah, Jnana Yoga. And uh, basically, look at Seni and Shukra, Venus and Saturn, the fifth lord and the ninth lord. And Mercury, of course, Lagna lord. So, all the three trine lords, first lord, fifth lord, and ninth lord, all the three ninth lords are in Aries. And Jupiter is fourth and seventh lord, a Kendra lord. So, his aspect on those three planets is a yoga. Jupiter and Mercury have a Raj Yoga, Jupiter Venus have a Raj Yoga, Jupiter Saturn have a Raj Yoga. And especially with Venus, Jupiter is extremely close. So there, is, there are various Raj Yogas given by Jupiter as the 4th Lord and 7th Lord. So relating to 7th house and 4th house matters, they can be excellent results. And he has another Yoga known as Kalanisi Yoga. Jupiter is in the 2nd or 5th house, aspected by Mercury or Venus. And here it is Gradhashti. When we are talking about Yogas, it's always Gradhashti. So if Jupiter is in 2nd or 5th, aspected by Mercury and Venus, it's, it's known as Kalanisi Yoga. So that Yoga is also there. So there are various yogas given by Jupiter. Actually, the series Libra is the important axis in this chart. All the yogas in the chart are in the second and eighth house axis. So, in that particular one, one, quart, uh, one twelfth of the dasha, in that particular portion, 86 December to 87 October, you should expect excellent results because of the yoga. Yoga is fine. And that was indeed a very good period. In 87 May, I used to stay first in the intermediate examinations, in the plus two exams. And then I, I was selected in the IIT entrance exam. I went to IIT. So everything good, whatever. Basically, the foundation for my life after that, my professional life after that, was laid out during that period. And that's because Jupiter is having nice yoga. As the fourth lord involved in Raj Yoga, he can give recognition in the in education. He can give success in education. So that was done in that particular one, one, one twelve. What about the next period? 87 October to 88 August. Rahu, Rahu and the, the state. What is Jupiter's state? Is he? Uh, what are? What can you say about Jupiter's state? Is he exalted, debilitated? No, none of those. Is he in a friendly house or an inimical house? He is yeah, he is retrograde. So retrograde is also a bad state. Uh, inimical house, right? Inimical house. Why? Venus. Jupiter is in Venus house. Are Jupiter and Venus friends? No, no, no. no, no, no. They are enemies. They are different. Yeah. One is the teacher of gods. One is the teacher of and their enemy. And especially Venus, is he a Tatkalika Mitra? I told you when we talked about friendship right. and enmity, I told you two parameters. One is in general the inherent relationship and the second is na the natural relationship. The second is Tatkalika Samantha, the temporary relationship. What is the rule for that? Who are friends? Three times on both sides. Right. So second, third, fourth on the planet and twelfth, eleventh and tenth. So three surrounding signs if you take, adjacent signs to the planet house, the house occupied by a planet. Any planet in those houses becomes a friend temporarily. And any planet which is far away will become enemy. And Jupiter and Venus are here far. in Samsaptaka. Venus is far away. So he is a Tatkalika Satru. So Tatkalika Satru and natural Satru. So it becomes Ajitatru. So Venus is very bad. Venus is not a good, good planet. So Jupiter, the fourth lord, he is badly placed in an inimical house. So, this one fourth, will education be good or will it be average? It will be average. It will be average. It will not be, definitely it will not be good. So, this is not a period. Suppose I was writing the intermediate exam, the higher secondary school exam, in that particular other dasha, you would, you would expect, even though my other dashas are fine, Nimshapri dasha and other dashas are fine, you probably would not have expected me to be straight first or be selected for IIT. It would have been, I would have taken a different path. I wouldn't have been really that successful. Because the, the one quarter that gives the results of yogas came at the time I was taking exam, I did well then. Once I went to IIT, in the first one year, I wasn't really doing well. I was in the middle of the class. I was not, I wasn't doing too badly because it's basically Jupiter and Sagittarius and Jupiter are basically well placed. 
So it wasn't bad. So in other words, whatever the chart promises, this is the chart will modify a little bit. Just because the planet is in Arishvetra Sthana, you can't say, oh, that year you will flunk all your exams. And if we, if the, if a planet is in Arishvetra Sthana, if you see somebody whose chart is basically weak, if you look at his D24, the chart of lending, if he is basically weak, you can't say that during that year you will become state first or university topper or something. It won't happen. So whatever the chart allows, there is some potential basically, some possibility. So there is some range of possibility. So within that range of possibility, when the planet is in Abhishatru Sthana and giving the result of its state, it will bottom out within those, within the range of possibility. And when there is, when the planet is in Adhimitra Sthana and giving the result, or if the planet is involved in good yoga and giving the result, it will basically peak. Similarly, if the planet was involved in a bad yoga, let us say, let us say the ninth lord was, was in exchange with the eighth lord, and he was giving the results of the yoga in a particular period, in a particular portion, then again, whatever possibility is there in the chart, the, the minimum and maximum, it will bottom out within that, because there is a bad yoga whose result is being given then. So you have to keep that in mind. So during that period, I wasn't doing, doing too badly. I wasn't at the end of the class or something, but I was in the middle of the class. I was used to being at the top of the class, but after I went to IIT during the first year, I was in the middle of the class. And that is because this is not a good antar. This is not a good one, qu one quarter of the one third. Now let us go to the next it one third. Is it also shows Dukita is in Dukita. Dukita. Dukita, yeah. Dukita? Oh, sorry. Dukita. Dukita. Dukita means Dukita. distress, no, not happy, sad. Yeah. So you can look at all those avasthas and you can, you can infer the result. But basically this is not a great period. If you look at that whole one, one fourth, sorry, one third of the dasha where Jupiter will give its results, the most negative results will be given okay. during that particular period. What actually happened in the IIT and why, why did you come down? I was relaxed. <laughs> I took it easy. <laughs> no specific reason. I just took it easy. And Libra. Libra is... <laughs> Venus sign. Enjoy. Relax. <laughs> so that, that's, that's exactly what I did. I, I just relaxed and it wasn't good. So I was, I was in the middle of the class. And then... Uh, the next one fourth. <coughs> what is the result? What are the possible results in the next one fourth? Lord also. Who will give the results? Lord will give in the beginning. And we said that the sign gives at the end because Sagittarius is back rising. And we said Lord is head rising, so he gave at the beginning. So middle one third will be given by? Aspects. Aspects. The planets who are? The planets who are aspecting and occupying that sign. How many planets are there aspecting and occupying it? Only one. <coughs> Pardon me? Only sun. Only sun. Only sun. No, please. Sir. So we said uh, Jupiter is in uh, Jupiter is in a Kushodera. Sorry, oh, Kushodera, 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 and then everybody else gets, gets to take whatever is left. So the middle one third from 88 August to 91 December, that one third will give the results of all the planets who are occupying and aspecting that sign. In the case of Aries, we have seven planets occupying and are aspecting it. But in the case of Sagittarius, there is only one planet. Who are aspecting Sagittarius by Rashi Drishti? Sun. Only Sun. Sun, no other planet. So Sun has Four whole years to give his results. You don't consider Argata or anything on no, nothing no, else. No. Only Rashi Drishti here. So Sun has four whole years to give his results. So what are the kind of results he will give? So let us see that. Okay? So the first the first one quarter. Again, because there is only one planet, because it's a reasonably long period, to get further insight you can divide, further subdivide the results of the planet into four equal parts using the same rules that we use for the Lord. So Jupiter being the Lord, his portion he, he divided into four parts. Sun being a planet, he can further subdivide his portion into four parts. So Sun's portion, which is exactly four under the sphere, that you can subdivide into four equal parts. So the first part, what will be the result? For me? Avastha. Avastha. Is sun 
is he well placed or badly placed? Is he exalted or debilitated or anything like that? Fun. Why? No. Why is he kind of debilitated? No. What? Yeah, but that's not debilitation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sun is in friend's house. Mm -hmm. Sun is in Jupiter's house. Yeah. And usually Sun and Jupiter like each other's houses. Okay. Sun is like the king and Jupiter is like the priest. When a king, that too Sun is a Satvik king, he is not a Tamasic king. Sun is a Satvik planet. When a Satvik king goes to the house of a learned pundit, he will, he will enjoy it there. He will engage in nice intellectual discussions and he will have fun there. But, but then he again ha has to go back to the court and then deal with killing people, etc. But when he is there, he is relaxed. So sun, sun is also karaka for dharma. So sun, when he is in Pisces or Sagittarius, when he is in Jupiter's house, he is very relaxed, he is very happy, happy being there. So, and also, when we talk about avastha, we said exaltation and debilitation. But there is actually another concept. It's not as if it's zero or one thing. It's a gradual thing. The planet is exalted in a particular point, 10 degrees Aries, for example, in the case of Sun, or a planet is debilitated at a particular point, 10 degrees Libra, that's where Sun is in deep debilitation. 10 degrees Aries is where he is in deep exaltation. But in between, he will be either more exalted or more debilitated. Even though he is not exactly exalted, he is close to, if he is close to Aries, he is close to being happy. If he is close to Libra, he is close to being sad. So there is a Bala known as Ucha Bala. If you look at the software, in Sharbala it is given, but you can judge it just by looking. <coughs> so if the planet is close to exaltation sign, then it is akin to being exalted. So basically Sun is well placed. Sun, has a, sun is in a good avastha, he is in a friendly house and he has excellent Uchabala. So because of that, this shows as Dina also. Yeah, that is also possible. D depending on the definition, he can be in various avasthas. He is in Kumara Avastha, Dreaming, Dina Avastha and Sainaji is very important. Look at Sainaji Avastha. Out of all the Avasthas, the basic Avasthas that are given by the software, they are important. One is Avastha relating to age, whether he is, whether he is young or old. If a planet is, let's say, very young, usually the theory being a very young planet is incapable of doing anything. Just as a boy, if you get a boy and ask, ask him to teach astrology, he is not really good. Of course, there may be a genius who a 10 years of age knows so much. But in general, a 10 year old boy, if you ask him to teach something or do something, he will not be able to do a good job. Similarly, if somebody is too old, again, he is past his peak. He will not be able to do a good job. On the other hand, if somebody is in youth, he is at the prime of his youth, he will be able to do a good job. So that is the idea here. The, there are five avasthas, Balja, Kaumara, so you, you can, we will we'll do them later, the avasthas. So basically they are very, they are basically very uh, boy, a very child state basically, then adolescent state and then youthful state and then uh, Vrdha which means basically old state, old age and finally death state, there is even a death state. A planet in death state is basically like his death. So those are, those are the five states and the idea being? Yes. Idea being, if a planet, <coughs> if a planet is in, is in Yuvavastha, which is basically prime of you, which is basically the middle of the sign, then it will give its results to the fullest. If it is towards the end of the sign, either at the beginning or at the end, then he is either in Murtavastha or Vrdhavastha, he is either dead or very old, or he is either child or adolescent. So he will not give perfect results. So that's the idea. The basic idea is that, but just like you have geniuses at a very young age or some old people, somebody may be 90 years old but still very active. He may have done yoga throughout his life and he may be very fit and active even at an age of 90. So you can't really go by age but that's one criterion. So like that there are three kinds of basic avasthas that are given in the software. This is state based on alertness. A planet can be either awake or asleep or dreaming. These are the three states. If a planet is awake, it will give full results. If it is dreaming, it will give half results. If it is asleep, yes. no results. That's what the Shastra says. But again, somebody may be very effective even in sleep. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It's just one of the parameters. It's one of the parameters. It's not the only parameter. And third one is the mood. It may be sad, it may be depressed, it may be excited, it may be 
like you said, maybe a shame, so they are very upset. So these are important, but the most important avastha is chayanari avastha. This shows the exact activity of the planet. Is he doing, is he, is he eating, is he sleeping, what is he doing? So depending on the, depending on the state of the planet, you can basically derive what is, what is the nature of the planet, what is the nature of the activity that the planet is interested in. So if you look at sun, what is the avastha of sun? Ritya lipsa avastha. So he is basically, what does Ritya lipsa mean literally? Desirous, desirous of dancing. So it's a very energetic state. Party mode. Party mode. <laughs> so, <coughs> so sun is, sun is basically excited. So sun is in Philips Avastha. But this is one aspect. Sainadi Avastha is one thing. Uchapala is the other thing. And whether he is in friend's house or enemy's house is the third thing. So you can combine all the three and you can get a good sense of how strong the planet is. If a planet is in friend's house, worst enemy, sorry, not friend. If a planet is in worst enemy's house, Adityatru Sthana, even if he, is, he wants to dance, he can't dance there. So even if he is in Nithilip Savastha, it's not really that good. On the other hand, if the planet is in Adityatru Sthana, and also let's say he is he's he's in all those bad avasthas, he is let's say in, he's sleeping, then that's, 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 that's it. There's nothing basically good going to happen. So you can combine all these three avasthas and get a sense. But here, Sun is in, Sun has excellent Vichyapala, he is close to his Uttarachi, he is in a friend's house, even though not Adhimitra, he is a friend. So, so he is well placed in Pisces and finally, he is in Vichalip Savastha. He is desirous of dancing. So, because of it, this particular, uh, this particular son is in a good state. So, the first one fourth. But he was in a Dina Avastha, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dina means? Sad. Sad, sad helpless. So, th there will be some helpless aspect also, okay. but you, ha you can't just go by one word. If you combine everything, overall he is good. All, all points. <laughs> all points. <coughs> Basically, give most importance to the friend, whether he is in friend's house or enemy, enemy's house. That is number one criteria. And second importance to the Uchabala, how close he is to the exaltation point or how far away he is to the exaltation point. So, give second importance to Uchabala. And give the third importance to Sainadi Avastha. And then whatever else, Dina Avastha, Khalavastha, all those will come at the end. <coughs> Can you repeat the parallel? Uchabala, how did you see that sun is in the... Uchabala, see where the planet is exalted. Which sign and actually there is a point for each planet. In each sign, let's say, we say Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. Okay. Sun is exalted in Aries. Venus is exalted in Pisces. Okay. There are exact degrees. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, uh, you can, I think it's in my book. Yeah, yeah, 10 degrees. But it is in my book. Okay. If you if you go through my book and many other books have it actually. If you go through any book, they will give the deep exaltation point for each planet. So what you do is you take the distance of the planet from that sign. So, from sorry, the from that meaning. from that point. The longitude of the planet and the langu longitude where it's deeply exalted. Oh. You see the distance. So based on the distance, if it is if the distance is zero, it is. It is really, actually what, what the, what Parashara's book says is actually see the distance from the debilitation point. See how many degrees he is from the debilitation point. And then divide it by some 3 or something. Then you will get the Uchibala as a number from 0 to 60. If it is exactly at 180 degrees from the deep debilitation point, then 180 divided by the 6, uh, by, divided by 3 will be 60. So, so it is fully strong. On the other hand, if he is exactly in the deep debilitation point, the distance is 0. So, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So, Uchibala is 0. So, like that if you do this math, this proportional math, you will get a number from 0 to 60 that will give you an idea of his Uchibala. Actually, you can get it in the software. Go to strength. The top tab is Shadbala. And by default, it gives the Shadbala summary. Go to Thanabala. And in Thanabala, you have various subdivisions. Uchibala, Saptavargajabala, Ojayugmabala, Kendrabala, Drakkanabala. So, uh, these are the various balas. Look at Uchibala. So, focus on Uchibala. <coughs> so, if you, if you see 0, that means the planet is extremely weak. If you see 60, that means planet is extremely good. So, excellent Uchibala. So, you see that Mercury is very weak. He has only, at least Saturn is only 1.16. You know why? He is in debilitation sign itself. So, he, he must be very close to the deep debilitation point. 
That is why his Uchabala is only 1.63. If you take Mercury, it is 6, again very small. Why? Because he is debilitated in Pisces. So if you find the exact longitude difference, the longitude difference must be around 18 degrees. He must be 18 degrees away from his deep, deep debilitated yeah, point. That's why his Uchabala is only 6. On the other hand, Shukra has, Venus has excellent Uchabala, 56, very close to his exaltation point. Which is, I think Venus exaltation point is 20 some degrees, 27 or so in Pisces. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the exact number. I used to remember, but now I forget everything. Everything is in place, so I forget. I think it's 27 or so degrees in Pisces. So, so when you say Pisces, why, what's the reference to the Pisces? No, you might have told me. Pardon me? He's exalted there. He's exalted there. So, and he's debilitated in Virgo. So is Venus closer to Virgo or closer to Pisces? So depending on how close he is to which one, it will be the point will be either close to 60 or close to zero. So that is that is how you basically derive the point, derive the score. But you can you can look at this to see the Uchabala. But bottom line is Sun has a very high Uchabala. From a scale of zero to 60, he has 54. So he is basically quite strong. 90% strength he has in terms of Uchabala. So Uchabala and then the, he was in yeah, friend's yeah. house and then he was in the Avatha. So this is overall a good period. And Sunny in general, what kind of planet is Sun? What what is the fiery and Dharma. Dharma, Sadhvi. And also he is a planet of he is a planet who gives position. Right? Position and authority. He is a planet who makes kings. He is a planet who makes prime ministers and presidents. He is the planet of power and power and fame and good reputation. And sun's aspect, as such, sun's aspect on the fourth house, it can show doing well in studies. Being okay. being a top guy in studies, being being at the top, top of the pack, that is definitely possible if a planet who shows position like sun is aspecting the fourth house. So during these four uh, these four antadasas in which sun is going to give his results based on what we saw until now. Overall, during that period, because of Sun's aspect on this sign, it will be a good period. But especially in the first one four, when he will give the result of his day, being a planet in friendly house with good Vuchabala and in Vichalipsavastha, and being such a planet aspecting the fourth house, he will give very good position in studies. So that particular uh, that, that particular one year, is it one year? No, actually, that, that particular... 10 month, 10 month period, the Antardasa, it will be good in studies. And it was actually exactly during that period that suddenly I decided to focus on studies a little bit more. And I, in my third semester at IIT Madras, which was 88 August to 88 December, I was first in my class. And I had a, I had a big difference be between the rest of the people. I was, I had a huge margin. So that margin was enough to basically keep me at the top of the class for a few more semesters before I, to second second rank towards the end of the end of the four years, so that semester was very crucial in taking me to the top of my class at IIT Madras, and that's because Sun is giving the results of his state. Okay. Now let us see Sun Sun uh, Sun's next next portion, the second uh -huh. portion. What are the results given by male fit planets in the second portion? Yoga. 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 Does Sun have any yoga? Yeah, Grahadrishti, yeah, conjunction, Samasaptaka, Harivartana, does he have any yoga at all? No. no. Sun doesn't have any yoga. Kapakatri yoga. Pardon me? You know, the, the Katri yoga is like Yeah, there is Katri yoga. Shubha as well as Papa. Actually, Papa. Papa Katri yoga. So, Sun is subjected to Papa Katri yoga. Right? Sun is subjected to Papa Katri yoga. At the same time, actually, Sun is taking part in a yoga known as Bhaskar Yoga in this particular chart. If you look at the yoga, you will see Bhaskara, some, some yoga, I believe. I don't know if it's even there. Yeah, Bhaskar Yoga. Sun in, sun in second, Mercury in third, and Jupiter in ninth, all from moon. So if from moon, if you take from moon, sun is in the second house, Mercury is in the third house, and Jupiter is in the ninth house, that is a, no, that is a yoga known as Bhaskar Yoga. So there is Bhaskar Yoga that Sun is involved in and the result will be wealthy, wealth, aristocratic, learned in Shastras, astrology and music. 
So these are the various things. Basically, it's a period of good learning. So because because Sun is involved in some yogas, it's, it's basically a good period in study. But he also has he's he's also with Gurika. Sun is with Gurika. Is he not with Gurika? Sun is at 20 degrees 52 minutes, and Gurika is at 20 degrees 23 minutes. Are they close to each other? Sun is extremely badly afflicted by Gurika. So if you see, let's say Sun is afflicted by Gurika or Rahu, let's say Sun is afflicted by Saturn, Mars is afflicted by Rahu, Jupiter is afflicted by Rahu in a chart, that is also a yoga. Yoga doesn't mean good things. Bad conjunction is also a yoga. Sun and Gurika are together, that's a yoga. That's a very important yoga. But a terrible yoga. It's a bad yoga. And when sun is afflicted by Gurika, it can show bad health. And here, sun is, of course, we know, I know that we are looking at the fourth house result, but fourth house is also the house of mental state, not just education. The mental state, mental peace, sukha, basically. So when sun, a male-fit planet is aspecting the fourth house, there can be sukha lopa, there can be problems in sukha, loss of sukha. And if the sun is afflicted by Gurika and aspecting the fourth house, there can be terrible affliction to the sukha. So, the result given by sun due to the conjunction with Gulika will be given in the second one fourth. So, during that period, is, the, is it possible that there will be some health problem which will give me a lot of, lot of discomfort and unhappiness and sukhalopa? Is it possible, do you think? Yes. So, during that period, the, uh, I had some health problems, I had some breathing problems allergic bronchitis, I, was, I had the allergic bronchitis, so I had to take some medication for a while. So I had, had some health problems during that time. And now, the third, the third one, one quarter of sun's results, what will those results be? Won by the house. It's the house is won by sun. So he is, what house does sun won? He is the 12th lot. He is the 12th lot. 12th house shows? Losses, expenditure, it also shows going, for me, teaching. why teaching, giving basically, giving. yeah it can show giving, yeah it can show giving, so the lot of the house of giving aspect in fourth house means, in education I can be giving a, giving a lot, actually during that period, I was, I was, what you said may not be based on perfect logic but it is actually correct, I was teaching a lot, I was teaching my, my co-students basically, and I used to take beautiful notes during that time. I had three color pens, blue, red, and green. I would never read my notes. I would just take, I would make nice pictures with different colors. I would, for subheadings, I would use one color. For headings, I would use one color. I would write very nice, meticulous notes, which is basically like a nice textbook, but I would never read it. I usually, I used to, whatever I grasp when I listen to something, I'm, I'm lazy to revisit it again. I will either remember it or I will not remember it. But my knowledge is based on one-time learning. I usually don't learn the same thing many times. I, I have aversion towards it. But I used to take notes so that people can benefit from it. People used to cut classes. They used to not come for the classes. <laughs> and all these are basically smart people. This is a very premier institute in India. So these were very smart people. They don't need to study whole semester. So when, when the exams come every month, they would just take somebody's notes and then they would, they would read for two, three days and then they'll be out there. They will, they will do well in the exam. And there used to be a list in, outside my, my room where people would come and sign up and tell them the priority. And I'm not kidding, all this is real, you can confirm from my, from my classmates. There used to be a list because my, my notes was very, yeah, very interesting to people. It was, it was preferred basically, but there were other people who took nice notes, so there was a priority list. And everybody had, had a list based on which I used to keep the notes. So I used to never see my notes in the 10 days before the exam. So all other time it would be with me, but during the time it would disappear. So I, w I was giving a lot and also I was teaching a lot. But apart from that, 12th house is the house of? Giving. Also settling abroad. Ketu is there. Rahu and Ketu are in the 12th house. You can also show settling abroad. So the 12th lord, the 12th lord son is activating 4th house. So that can show thinking of going abroad for studies. Fourth house is study, and twelfth class impact shows studying abroad. So sun aspect on the fourth house, not as 
from the giver of power, but as the false lord. That can make me think of going abroad. So during that particular answer, the sir, I was, I was, uh, basically we were negotiating universities, we were, we were sharing the universities among all the students in my class, deciding who will apply to which university, we were getting recommendation letters from professors, filling out all the applications. So all that, uh, uh, going abroad was the, basically the focus during that particular period. And the last answer, the sir, son will give the results of the house he occupies. What house does he occupy? Seventh house. Seventh house. Can seventh house take one abroad? Yeah. yeah. Seventh house we said yeah. earlier. Seventh, ninth are the houses of going abroad. Yeah. And twelfth house is the house of settling abroad. So, and ninth house is the house of flourishing abroad. And seventh house is the house of traveling abroad. So these are the important houses. And moreover, apart from seventh, ninth and twelfth, there was one parameter I said, I talked about it in one class, not Palani, anybody else can answer, yes. do you remember? Yes. Apart from 7th, 9th and 12th, there is one important house, as far as going abroad is concerned. Third. No, third is general third. travel. Eighth eight house. Eight house is general stability, they can be involved, but there is one very important house. If you don't remember, I really have to trouble you to get the answer. Okay, Vargasthana. Okay. Bhadhasthana, we talked about Bhadhasthana in a previous class. For Chararasi, mobile science, 11th is Bhadhasthana. For Therarasi, fictional science, 9th is the Bhadhasthana. For dual science, 7th is the Bhadhasthana. And I said earlier that Bhadhasthana is a very important house for going abroad. If a planet is in Bhadhasthana, he can take somebody abroad. So here, Sun is in Bhadhasthana and he is aspecting 4th house. So, I can travel abroad for study. Chararasi is 11th house. If you actually look at your notes, it may be there because I mentioned it two, three times earlier. Uh, Chararasi is 11th house. Therarasi is 9th house from them. Jewel signs, the 7th house from them. So, these are the Bhadhasthana. Planets in the Bhadhasthana, planets owning the Bhadhasthana, they can take the person abroad. <coughs> So, during that Antar Dasha, 91 February to 91 December, during that period, basically, I, I, I left India, I came to US for my master's, and that is because a planet in Bhadrasthana aspecting the fourth house can give foreign travel going, going abroad for study. That is why I came abroad for study, not for career, because it's the focus is fourth house. Bhadrasthana planet aspecting fourth house can show going abroad for studies. So during that period I came abroad. I came to US for studies. Okay? And the last one third? Ketu shows long, long, long during too, right? Ketu? Yes. 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 So that being in the fourth shows long, a long during. Uh, Ketu being in fourth from where? From the, from the sun. Or from the, uh, no, no. I mean, I mean in the, uh, aspecting. Who is aspecting sun? Yeah, the sun. Yeah. yeah and that's showing long during. Sun, the dispositor of K2, yes. dispositor of the yes, yes, twelfth house showing, long. yeah, it can show, yeah, yeah. It can show long during. Yeah. Now, the last, the last one, one third of the Mahadasa, that we give the results of the sign itself, Sagittarius. So, what are the results that you can expect? Sagittarius. Yeah. So I don't really have because tradition tradition does not have any clear rules for dividing the subdividing the results of the sign itself into four or three equal parts again. There may be some rules, but I don't know of them. So I don't want I can't teach you any further rules. But what you should look in the in the data of sign is the nature of the sign itself. Is it a sarcastic sign? Is it a thomistic sign? Is it an energetic sign? Is it a peaceful sign? Is it a calm sign? So you can look at the nature of the sign itself and house. What house is it from Lagna, from Arur Lagna? So wha what house is it? And also look at sign aspects on that sign. When you say Sagittarius gives you results, there are other signs that are aspecting Sagittarius. So they will get to give their results in that particular one third of the desha.
So Sagittarius is is affected by who? Pisces. 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 Gemini. Gemini and Virgo. So during this dasha and also is basically fourth house. So this one third the focus will be learning, education, fourth house, and also maybe marriage. Seventh house is affecting it. Fourth house is sukha, and seventh house is affecting it. So they can be vivaha sukha, they can be vivaha marriage, and tenth house is affecting it. So they can be career can excuse me career can start then, and lagna is affecting it. So health taking taking good care of health. Earlier I was not taking good care of my health, but taking good care of health. So all those results are. Possible in the period that corresponds to Sagittarius, so from 91 December till 95 April. So this is how you divide the dasha into three parts and then judge various results. Let me, let me, le let us look at the next dasha. Let me see how well you do on your own. Let us look at the first two thirds. Who will give the results in first one third? So Yeri, is it Pushtadaya or Tishadaya? Aries. Aries is Prusthadaya. Back rising. Aries, Taurus, Cancer and Sagittarius and Capricorn. These are back rising. So the last one third will give the result of Aries. And now first and second slots are available. Which one will Mars take? He will take the second one because E2 is in a Prusthadaya rising. E2 is in a back rising sign. So the first one fourth will be the result of? All the association. All the associations. There are so many of those. So let us make a list. Let me open. <laughs> so remember that it's starting in 95 April and it goes on for four years. Okay. So first we have to arrange them in the order of longitude. So the planets are Moon, Rahu, Ketu, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Saturn. Who will come first? Moon being Atmagarka. He is at 28 degrees 33 minutes. That is his advancement in Aquarius. So the first will be the first will be Moon. From when? April 95. How long is each portion? We have 7 portions. And this is 4 years. 48 months. So roughly 7 months. So let's say it's actually a little bit less. But let's give let's give 7. Let's give 7. 11.95. And by the way, I will... Inclusive or we have to include that for the starting year? Yeah, it's April 4.95 to some date in November 95. We haven't found... We are not. We are doing approximately here. Okay. We are not giving dates. Mm -hmm. But actually in software, I can... I will probably put a feature letter to show the subdivisions using this also. By the way, I released... I, the software that I shared with all of you in last May or June when I started these classes, I made it free, not just for this class, but for yes. for the for the whole world in the, on the Marco Bonima day, a couple of weeks back. So the software is totally free now. Anybody in the world can download it. Earlier had this light version, the free version, and the commercial version. So those of you who joined the class late and don't have the software with you, they can just download it from the from the internet. If you go to my website, VedicAstrologer.org, you can download the software, the full version. But I put only a four four and a half megabyte version, which is doesn't have the atlas and the full ephemery. It has only uh, I think 600 year ephemery from 1800 AD to 2400 AD. So the rest of the ephemery is not there, and the atlas is not there. And the full version is 56 MB. I'm going to put it on a download site. I, I found a free hosting with a lot of bandwidth, so I'll put it there so you can download it if you have if you have good connection. Otherwise, you can request somebody who already has a CD to. Input on a regular site that we have. Yeah, but that will heat the bandwidth. So we need something with very good bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Because if 10 people are downloading. See, when I put this software two weeks back, so far 2,000 people downloaded it. <laughs> the 4 megabyte version. Maybe yeah. 56, not so many people will download. But if 10 people are downloading at the same time, the bandwidth yeah. will become huge. So it's not just space, but it's the bandwidth also. Yeah. And a lot of sites they charge with the bandwidth you all exceed the... I, I, I don't know about this particular site okay. that, that has the MP3 file. So it's, it's safe to have have a site where I don't have to... <laughs> this site basically Sriram has to pay. So if, if it goes over, basically Sriram has to pay. But that site is totally free. So I will put it so you can download it. And also if you have, if you can download, 
And if you can make copies of it and give it to other people in the class, that will be great. And I removed the license key feature. Earlier, when I gave you the CD, you had to ask me for a license key and I had to give you a license key. That is removed now. So this will be more convenient to have. If you have the CD, you can install it on any computer and do this. So try to download the latest. And also it has more features than what you had, what I gave you in May. There are more calculations and more corrections also. More correct calculations in some, some areas. So try to download it. Download, it will just upgrade on there is an upgrade option also. So if you go to the site, there is an upgrade okay. link. Go to that upgrade link and try it. 99% okay. it will work. I have already upgraded my <coughs> Okay. So can I copy it on the screen? That's messy. So the best thing is, uh, actually if you copy the whole directory and copy yeah. it back, it will work. It will work. There is no registry entry which needs no. to be no. There isn't. There isn't. I, wasn't, I was purposely not using anything. So you can just copy the whole thing, back it up in a CD, and then you can directly copy it. Then you don't install basically. You don't do set up that yet. Just copy. That will work. That will work. File type. Pardon me? But not the HTTPS will be fine. Oh, that does. Whenever you start jehora.exe, it automatically registers the intellection. Every time. Every time. So that is how most programs work. So you don't have to do it at the install time, even though you can. So that's not a problem. There are some files that are used in the C drive, mm -hmm. that is root C drive, yeah. all your preferences, color preferences, uh, calculation preferences. So those files will be basically, you can copy them to the other computer or you will lose them. You will have to recreate. If you did custom, customization of all these colors, if you don't like these default colors, and customize all the colors, you will lose it. So you have to copy those files also in that case. And in any case, if you install freshly from a CD, you will lose them. Lose your customization. Anyway, uh, <coughs> so try to download the latest software and try to share it with other people. Just make one CD and share it with one person. That will help. If each person shares with somebody else, that will help. Then I don't have to make a lot of copies. So seven, seven months, that will be moon. Mark. Who's next? Mark. Who's more advanced? Amart Chakaraka. Mars is 26 degrees, 40 minutes advanced. So Mars. When will Mars give his results? From 11.95 to? 5.96. 6. Yeah. Then, who's next? <coughs> next, Dhadragaraka son, but he's not, he is not one of the seven planets. So ignore. Next Karaka is? Matagaraka Saturn. Matagaraka Saturn. So moon from April 95 to November 95, Mars from November 95 to June 96, Saturn, June 96 to? January 9. 6 plus 1, January 97. Saturn, Rahu and Ketu are Pardon me? Oh, but reverse, reverse. Their longitudes are counted from the end of the time. So Rahu, even though he looks like he's at 1653, 16 degrees 53 minutes. His advancement in the sign is 13 degrees 7 minutes. You have to subtract it from 30 degrees. So he loses out. So that's why he Saturn wins as Matragaraka and the next lot of Pitragaraka is taken by Rahu, not, not the other way. So Rahu, the next planet in, in the longitude order is Rahu and he will give the results from January 97 to August 97 and then Ketu. Who is at the same longitude? In both the together, you check, uh, Not together, they are always in the same longitude. Yeah, they are in the same longitude. So normally there are different views that I heard from Endless. One is Rahu is always first. Okay. Ketu will always adjust and come next. That is one view. Other view is you can also look at the strength. If Rahu, if Ketu is, let us say, in molecular corner or exaltation. Actually, if Ketu is exalted, Rahu is also exalted. But let's say Ketu is in a friend's house. Maybe he will dominate. So you can experiment. But the bottom line is Rahu and Ketu are very alike anyway. So, so no, no, no. Rahu is the You are looking at only longitudes here. You are not looking at anything else. <coughs> so Ketu's results will be from August 97 to March, uh, March 98. And then we have covered five planets. Two are left. Who are the two? Mercury and Venus. Venus is at 7 degrees 54 minutes, he is Gnatikaraka. Mercury is Dargaraka, 3 degrees. So Mercury comes last. So Venus, from Venus from March 98 to October 98. 
and mercury. October 98 to don't add 7 now, 7 months because April. we have reached the end. April so now round it, round it, April 99, that's the end. So basically we are getting only 6 months for mercury, but it's actually a little more. If you look, look at the exact case. Okay. So this is the list. This is the list of planets. Moon, Mars, for those who are listening to the audio, Moon, Mars, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Venus and Mercury. He is getting roughly 7. Yes. By default, uh, this Atmakara can they are uh, they are defined based on the longitude. Yes, based on the longitude. So, so if you look at them, the you father itself is uh, the father itself is made as part of. Uh, yes, yes. You can keep a list of planets made uh, based on the Charkar Gatva, and then if you if you want to take three or four planets out of them, you can just take them in order. You can so so you can very quickly do that. Okay. Now, mm, so. Now let us see each, let us judge the results of each influence. You can't click on the longitude and measure in the order of No, no. Yeah. No, you can't. I am going to make this software open source in a couple of years or so. And then people who are also software in this, they can take over. And then they can start adding yeah, features. Exactly. If you like clicking on that and then starting out, add that feature. I can put that against your name. Sesu Sata Adha. Sesu Sata Adha. Sesu Sata Adha. Sesu Sata Okay. <coughs> okay. What are the possible results in Moon? Moon and Adha. Moon is in We don't see the uh, ownership of the house. We just see. For me, now see. Let us let us refresh again. We are looking at these planets because in those periods they will give the results of their association with Aries. This is after Aries data. So whatever whatever impact they have on Aries, the result of that impact will be given during that period. So what is Moon's impact on Aries? It's balance of gain. Again, now you will see the position where he is. Right? So he is a fixed. Owning 6th house having an effect on this. Not owning 6th house, he is owning 11th house. He is owning 11th house, he owns 11th house, he occupies the 6th house and he aspects 8th. He aspects 8th. So his aspect on 8th. Yeah. He brings the 11th house results to 8th. The 11th house results to 8th through 6th house. Because 6th house is where he is placed. So through the 6th house, he will bring the 11th house results to the 8th house. Which means he will get to the, to the data basically. That means he will get gains through, through some obstacles. Through, through overcoming some obstacles through or through service, he through work. Job. Yeah, he, I had job earlier, but basically uh, during this period, what happened actually? I came back to US. I, I went back to India after my master's and then I worked in India for a year. I went to Korea. I, I experimented with Korea for a, for a few months. 10 months and then I decided to come back to US. I didn't want to go back to India so I came to US. So during this period I I came to US and then very soon after I came here I wasn't happy with the place that I came with because I had to first come and then I found another job in the same period. So I found I found a couple of jobs basically, couple of jobs. So I used the first job I came as a stepping stone and then found, found one more job very, very immediately. Within three months I found another offer and I was in the original job for just six months. So all that happened during that moon period. So he brought some gains relating to relating to job, relating to six house can show job and service. If somebody is not in business, it's the 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 Yeah, you can see. You can see Arutapada. But I'm basically making it simple so that we don't confuse with too many parameters. So if you just look at the change result because Rahu is there but when you are looking no, no, you don't not not in this particular thing. Okay. <coughs> now, so that period is a period of gain. And what is the next period? Mars. Mars. November 95 to June 96. So, uh, first of all, is it good or bad? 8 log in 8 house. Yeah. Mars being in 8 house, Mars being in Aries, is it good or bad? 
He is his own house. Own house. Yeah. No. Mass being in IT is in general bad. But as far as Eric Dasha is concerned, it benefits the mass being there. Because he is the lord of the time. So Mars period is a very good period. Uh, that is, uh, be, being the lord basically, but the thing is it is also 8th house. So there will be changes etc. But good changes because it is the lord, lord who is in the house. So a lot of good changes in life etc. So it was during that time that actually the job that I found earlier, the visa was approved and I finally uh, switched the job and all those things. And also... Were you married during this time? Long before. You had a kid this time? Yes. How old did you guess best done? A5. A5. Good, good guess. Yes. I had a child in that period. Very good for me. Then, if you didn't understand it, just ignore it. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> I, you can ignore, you can, you can, you can assume that I didn't have a kid then. If you please. Then look at the next period, Saturn. June 96 to January 98. Saturn is in? It's, it's a weak position, but it's a Saturn is debilitated in Aries. Yeah. yeah. So, so Saturn being debilitated in Aries, is Aries happy about it? Not really. Yeah. It's not really. Saturn's presence in that sign is not really uplifting that sign in any way. Yeah. It's, not, it's not really beneficial for that it's sign. Nichabangaraj Yoga, right? Yeah, there is Nichabangaraj Yoga. But bottom line is, actually Aries doesn't even care if Saturn is in Nicha or he is in Ucha. Aries, when Saturn is in a sign, it doesn't, that sign doesn't like Saturn. But he is the fifth lord. He is the sixth lord as well as fifth lord. So, it's not just Saturn, it is fifth lord and sixth lord being in Aries. So, that result will come. So, fifth lord being in the eighth house, will it be lot of, will there be lot of occult learning? Eighth house is also the house of occult learning. If the fifth, fifth is the house of scholarship, if the fifth lord is in eighth house, there can be lot of scholarship during that period. So that period, during that particular period, Saturn gives, can give a lot of learning, scholarship, etc. But at the same time, being Saturn, being who he is, being in the eighth house, he can make he can make health not so good. So overall, Even it's a bad period. Fifth health, there could be some. Uh, because the fifth lord is in the eighth house. house. So yes. Anxiety. Yeah. Related yeah. There can be anxiety related to fifth house. Yes. And he's the sixth lord in the eighth house. Saturn is the sixth lord in the eighth house. For me? Vipreet Yeah, Vipreet Raja Yoga fine, but we are not really looking at yoga here. Basically, the sixth lord is in that sign. Forget that Aries is eighth house for a moment. Aries contains Shani, the sixth lord. So, as the sixth lord in that sign, he, he gave scholarship. As the sixth lord in that, in that sign, can he give some kind of accident? Sixth house can give accident. If there is a link between sixth lord and eighth lord, there can be accident. Of course, that's a Vipreet Raj Yoga. One car is broken and you buy a giant <laughs> car. That's Vipreet. You can look at it as Vipreet Raj Yoga, but 6th Lord in 8th is actually not so good. It can give accidents also. 8th Lord in 6th or 6th Lord in 8th. So, during that time, I had a vehicular accident during the Saturn, Saturn under the sun. So, all the Saturn 9 results came basically. <coughs> then Rahu. What are the results possible in Rahu's under the sun? Same as moon? More or less, but he is not 11th lord. He is yeah. the 6th lord in 6th lord. Yeah. Moon is uncomfortably placed in Aquarius, but Rahu is comfortably, comfortably placed in Aquarius. It is his own sign. Aquarius is owned by Rahu. So, the 6th lord is nicely placed in the 6th house and then he is affecting 8th house. So, there is a difference between 6th lord debilitated in the 8th house and 6th lord being strong in the 6th house and affecting that house. So, what will you say about that particular Antardasa? What will Rahu's aspect on Aries show? Come out from all trouble. For me? More trouble. More trouble. Is it trouble? Rahu is, is in one sign. He is strong. So, and sixth house is the house of? Sixth house is the house of? Success or enemies. Success or enemies. If the sixth lord is strong, that means you will have obstacles to overcome. But you will overcome them. So, it's not smooth sailing basically. If you have a strong sixth lord in the sixth, it is not smooth sailing, but it will, it will be successful sailing. Successful sailing, those things will be hard. So, that is a period of working hard, 
or coming lot of obstacles service. and then yeah in the service all this in the service. In the end we would have gained in this particular in the, in the end yeah it's 11000 yeah yeah it's 11th house what what 11th house 11th to aries yeah. okay rahu is in the 11th from aries and acting in aries yeah that's a good point but we don't we don't really look from look at houses from aries because aries is not lagna it is a it is just narayan this sign if you remember our earlier discussion in the aries that are the lagna the progress lagna is actually libra okay. aries is the 7th house progress 7th house not lagna so, so yeah you don't take aries as lagna and look at it so that's not a valid point but being the sixth lord in the sixth house aspect in the eighth house he can give lot of he can give some anxiety and some obstacles but successfully successfully overcoming them and successfully fighting with the enemy successful fight back so nothing really special happened then i was working hard i was i was working well and ketu what will ketu is the show ketu aspecting the aries third lord ketu is third lord not third lord yeah he is third lord in 12th house so he is the third lord what what does third show third is communication communication short travel so there can be lot of travel he is affecting the dasha sign so during the period there can be lot of lot of travel or lot lot of initiative lot of boldness and also lot of communication and ketu is basically in the 12th house of moksha moksha darka is in the house of moksha so will it will this will this dasha will this period also bring spirituality lot of spirituality so all the spirituality increase the religiousness increase the pujas etc they increase during that particular period and also it was during that period that i first appeared on the internet discussing astrology there was a jyotish list there was a list for astrology called jyotish list i i was i was actively participating exactly from that period from around september or so in 1997 i joined that list and i used to make lot of postings and that is where i met my guru pandit sanjay raj it was exactly exactly during that period that i met my guru pandit sanjay raj so i met my guru uh, basically ketu shows parampara ketu is a significator for for parampara so ketu aspect on aries can show aries is eighth house eighth house is not only troubles but occult knowledge so some parampara coming some parampara relationship coming related to occult knowledge is possible spirituality is possible and communication definitely definitely that was that was the period when i communicated a lot and towards the end of that period around february 98 or so i had i had a uh, i was i i felt i was mistreated compared to some some person that i was arguing with and i was being blocked and i was i was angry and i left that particular list for that period and the writing activity basically slowed down but exactly in ketu period the writing activity was very uh, very strong during that period so this period gave the results of ketu Twelfth house Ketu, third lord Ketu, and Ketu being Ketu, the parampara Ketu, Vedic Ketu, Vedic knowledge and parampara significator Ketu. So all that was given in Ketu's period. So and now we have the Ketu influence on the eighth house uh, in the last year during the time frame when we started the class. We'll yeah. see, maybe, yes, maybe. So we didn't write much. We didn't come and get much. No, but we have. That's not a third one, but it's an influence of Ketu. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see. We'll see later. We'll see later. <laughs> Now Venus, what will Venus show? Venus is in the eighth house. Venus is the ninth lord. He is in the and the second lord. He is the second lord and ninth lord, and he is in Aries. So is he good? Yes. Yeah. Venus being in Aries is good. For Venus, it may be bad. Being the ninth lord, he may not like Aries. He may prefer to be somewhere else. If you give him a choice, he will be in Pisces. he will love to be in pisces or he will settle with libra or taurus also but he hates aries so venus himself is not happy about being in aries so when you are judging aries venus dasha when you are judging the house occupied by him then there may be bad results but as far as aries is concerned he is excited that venus came there <coughs> and he is sad that saturn came there saturn himself may be good happy being in aries because he has mithun and raj yoga but aries hates saturn being there it hey but it loves mercury and venus they are really nice guys if two nice guys come to your house you are happy about it the ninth day may look at your house and you may think oh what a house why did i come here but still <laughs> the house is happy and the house is benefited by their presence so that's the idea so in 
So in Venus part of Aries Dasha, when Venus gives his result, the results, the good results that Venus either signifies or won't. The, house, the results of the houses won by Venus and the results of the significations of Venus will be felt. So what are those results? Second house, so more resource, being more resourceful, more money, accumulating more money, and what else? Ninth house, so protection, fortune, and guru, lot of guidance. Venus being the ninth lord, being an Aries, he can give lot of guidance. So in the previous under the side, I wrote a lot on Jyotish list, and then Sanjay ji, he joined that list, and in the beginning he was talking about, no, actually as per Germany, he is the Karka, actually we use Chaddhan Sanara and Dasha, so because 8000 Dasha is running, there will be instability. Like that he was saying things that I never heard. He was using Arura Padas, he was using Charakarkas, I was wondering who is this. First I thought, he is a weird guy, <laughs> because he is changing everything that I know. First I thought he was some, some kind of weird guy. But later I became interested. Then I realized, based on reading what he was saying, he, was, he wasn't making as many postings on the list. He was making very few postings every few days. And I was posting so many things every day. I was very active. And he looked at my post and he was interested. This guy seems to be, seems to be a reasonably intelligent guy. And I was interested in him. I, I saw his postings and I thought, it would be nice if I can learn all these things from that, this guy. So all that happened in K2 period. I communicated with him. He communicated with, with me. And it was in April, I think April 7th or 8th, beginning of April, basically, 1998, when he finally sent me a mail saying he was accepting me as a student. I was his second student. The first student was somebody known as Ashok Kaushik. And now he has hundreds of students. I was the second student of his. And he accepted me in April, as soon as Venus Dasha came. And not only did he accept, but he spent a lot of time communicating with me. Uh, he devoted some time to me. And I was asking questions on the internet. I was talking to him on the phone. So I got a lot of guidance during that period. That's because Venus is the ninth lord of guidance and guru. Then Mercury. October 98 to April 99. This is basically the result of Mercury. Is it first of all good or bad? Why bad? Lagna lord in the 8th house or the health of Again, forget that 8th house. He is Lagna Lord. 8th house, Aries itself is 8th house. So the whole Aries Dasha will be the 8th house result. Oh, okay. But Mercury's influence when it comes, that is uplifting for Aries. Okay. Just as Venus influence. Okay. So Mercury is the 1st Lord and 10th Lord. So good health, good career, etc. So doing well in the job. and it's a, it's a overall positive period. So that was a good period. So now this is done. Let us go to, actually let me close it. So this is the first one for. We finished on only. You have any question? No. Lagna Lord being in eight, uh, I thought it is bad. But as far as Aries is concerned, it is good for Aries for for itself. Within that, that's why it is a good influence yes. for Aries. Yes. Having the Lagna Lord is a good influence. Okay. So any sign that has Lagna Lord will give good health. But not the whole period. If it is eighth house. When the, when, the, when, the, when the portion of the 8th house results giving comes, when the portion comes where it gives the results of being 8th house, then it will give bad, bad results. When the portion comes where it gives the result of Mercury occupying it, Lagna Lord occupying it, it will give good health. You, you, see, you see what I am saying? So there are so many parameters. What I am saying is the peak of each parameter will come at a particular pre-restrained period. So that is, that, is, that is basically what we are doing. So when, when did we say Aries gives his result, being the eighth house? Yes. In the last one third. Right. Mercury, uh, sorry, not Mercury. Aries is a Pushtare Rasi, so it, it will give the results of Aries itself in the last one third. So from 2003 April till 2007 July, uh, April, that is when Aries will give the result of being eighth house. So I have to be careful about my health during this period. Actually, for the last one year, my health is not really great. And there are various other reasons also for it. But this is when the 8th house results will be experienced. But not, not in the previous period. And now let us go to the middle one third. That will be interesting. In the middle one third, from Leo to Sag Scorpio on the chart. Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio. These one, this one third. Whose results are experienced? House Lord. Mars. Mars results. The House Lord. 
So what are the result mass gives? Let us use the four part rule again. Divide that one third into four equal parts. Mass so mass is easy, benefit or male fix? No doubt, right? Uh, Good. So mass will give the result of his state in the first one third. First one third will be the result of state. So Good state. What is the state? Yeah. He has moderate Vichabala, but he is own house. He is in Mola Trikona. Mars is in Mola Trikona. So that is a, there is an excellent strength. And what else? Uh, there may be several other avastas. If you see, just for the sake of completeness, if we see the Sainadi avastha, again, he is in Ritalipsa avastha. Mars is also in Ritalipsa avastha. So he is also very active state, basically, energetic. So, <coughs> so, Overall, he has a good state. He's a he's a strong planet. So, what does it mean? What does it mean? It is basically eight lord in eight house in in, a, in in strength basically. So, uh, this particular strength being more in more trikona, that basically gives result, good results, very good results relating to eighth house and also relating to Martian matters, the significations of Mars. So, overall. This is a good period. Being a planet in Molotrikona in the eighth house, he will give good occult knowledge, lot of lot of occult knowledge. Overall, health is also good. Everything is good. Very straightforward because Mars is giving Sala Yoga, and I said that Yoga, the result of Yoga, is given in the second one one quarter for male planets. But Sala Yoga is not a Yoga between two planets. It's a Yoga. It's a Yoga given by Mars himself. If Mars is in Molotrikona, sorry, if Mars is in own house in the eighth house, he gives Sala Yoga. Any planet in eighth house, if he is in one sign, it will give Sala Yoga. Any planet in sixth house in one house will give Harsha Yoga. Any planet in twelfth house in one house will give Himal Yoga. So here Mars is giving Sala Yoga. So that result is also experience. It's, a, it's basically because of his state that that Yoga came. He is in one house, in that particular house. So overall, this is a period where I will be very straightforward, where I will be lending a lot of Akkan knowledge. Overall, a good period. Now, look at the second one, second one quarter. What are the results given in the second one quarter? What are the results given in the second one quarter? The yoga of Mars. Again, in the good period or bad period? It's a good period. Mars, why, why is it a good period? That house. Jupiter was forming yoga. What about Mars? What about Mars? Is he farming yoga? He is farming a Vipreet Raj Yoga with Saturn. Being the 8th Lord with the 6th Lord, he is farming Vipreet Raj Yoga. Raja Sambandha Yoga. He has got a yoga with Jupiter too. Yeah. He is Amartikar Ka. What Raja Sambandha Yoga? Mars. Oops. Important person in King's Court. No, no, no. What is the combination? That's the result. Which is also Amandha Yoga? Amartya Karaka Kanjayan in 10th Lord. Okay. Amartya Karaka Kanjayan in 10th Lord, also Amartya Karaka in 1st Lord. So there are two Raja Samandha Yogas that is Mars is giving. So, so basically, one Yoga that Mars has is Raja Samandha Yoga, which is given by Parashara. If Amartya Karaka and 10th Lord are together or affecting each other, he will be an important person in a king's court. I was not an important person in any king's court, but during that period, I, I, I was an important person in my my group. Basically, I guess my manager is a king, and I was an important person in his court. court. So basically, be, because of that yoga, things will go well in the career because he's with tenth lord, Amatikarka, yeah. with tenth lord. So things will go well in career. There will be there will be recognition in the workplace. Become an important person in the team, a key person in the team. So all those things are possible during that one quarter, that one quarter of one third. What is? He is also with the ninth lot, eighth lot with the ninth lot. And what is that uh, balance with the eighth yoga too? Pardon me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, is, right. Which is, which is with, uh, Being in the second from sun. Being in second from sun is Vesi yoga. Guru Mangal yoga also is there. So all these results will be given. Vesi is basically any planet apart from moon and north. If they are in the second from sun, it's called with yoga. And you can use it as balanced, truthful and happy. I mean, you should not use these as calcium. You should not tell people, you should be balanced, 
because he has with yoga. <laughs> you can other things also. That will be more balanced to look at everything. But, but basically, it's a good yoga. So, planet is in the second concern. So, bottom line is, all these, that all these results of, of the good yoga will be given by Mars. But in the case of Mars, it's not only good yoga. There are negative yogas also. What are the negative yogas? He is afflicting, he is the 8th lord and he is afflicting 5th lord and 9th lord and 1st lord. All the trinal lords are being afflicted by Mars. He is a malefic planet who is afflicting all the trinal lords. Right? Does everybody understand that? How close they are? That we How close they are, exactly. So that's what you have to look at. Are they really that close? Because when we are talking about afflicting. When we are talking about affliction of the eighth lord to ninth lord, for example, how close they are? Are they? Who is the closest to Mars? You have to look at the longitude for that. Mars is at 27 degrees roughly. He is in the 27th degree of Aries, and Saturn is in the 16th degree of Aries. He is at 15 degrees six minutes, and Mercury is at the beginning three degrees, and Venus is at around eight degrees. So. The good planets are actually far away. It is Saturn who is closest. And even though Saturn is the fifth lord also, he is sixth lord too. So the Vipreetra Raj Yoga is actually giving uh, stronger results. So otherwise, with the same combination, if the longitudes were different, if Mars was, let's say, close to Mercury, you could have actually predicted during that period problems in Kiri. But here, because those bad yogas are weak, and the strong yoga is, uh, good yogas are stronger, the Vipisa Yoga is stronger, you basically predict that there will be there will be good results. And more more importantly, if you see, remember this, if Bhaska Lord or the sec, or the eighth Lord is associated with the Lagna Lord, Fifth Lord, Ninth Lord, etc., the person can settle abroad during that period. So it was during that period that I got my green card. Because Mars is the eighth lord, he is a very strong lord a strong planet and he is afflicting ninth lord, he is afflicting fifth lord, he is afflicting lagna lord. So his affliction on all the trinal lords will show being displaced. I am settling here means I am displaced from, from my motherland. So the, it's an, you can look at it negatively also. I may be making money, but you can look at it negatively also. So if you see eighth lord afflicting trinal lords or bhadaka lord afflicting trinal lords, that can actually show settling abroad also. So during that period, I also got my green card. Now, the next, the next one, one quarter, 2001 April to 2002 April, the third quarter of Mars results, the large results. So that will give the results of, what will be the results? The own house. Own house? Yes, yeah, own house. Yeah. The houses that Mars owns. What are the houses Mars owns? Third and eighth. Third and eighth large. Now forget the fact that he is in own house, he is strong in the eighth house. We don't care. We don't care about his state. Forget the fact that he is with all these nice planets. Forget it. Just being the third lord and eighth lord, being in that sign, that's a sign, what are the results he will give? What kind of results are they? Right, lot of lot of third house can be a lot of writing. Can it be changes? Eighth house can be a lot of changes in life. And third house? Third house can show, can it show buying a house? Buying a vehicle also. Buying a vehicle, excellent. Third house is the twelfth song, fourth. So it's a big investment on fourth house. So if you see a strong third house, especially with Martian connection, that can result in buying real estate or buying house, buying property, etc. Mars is the cargo for buying houses, taking a loan and buying a house, or putting a big investment and buying a house. Mars is the cargo for that. And fourth house is the house and Jaya, the house of expenditure from that, is the third. Fourth house shows basically comfort. When somebody buys a house, don't expect the fourth house to be strong, fourth house to come out. It may come out sometime, but fourth house is the house of Sukha. If somebody bought a house, moved into that house, had to live with instability, buy things, etc. for a year, don't expect the fourth house to be involved because he's not enjoying. He, he may be enjoying, but he's basically ex going through expenses for that, for that house. So it will be the third house. So in general, Mars being the third and eighth lord, life will have a lot of instability. But being the third and eighth lord also placed in a dasthana. Had he been third and eighth lord being placed in a, in a good house, it would have been bad. 
but third and eighth lord also being placed in a dusthana is good so as the third and eighth lord he will give corresponding results but he will give good results corresponding to those not bad results so there will be lot of instability in life but in a positive, positive. way okay so during that particular period i change my job can third and eighth house show change in job yeah yeah we we yeah. saw a lot of examples yeah. in the past so there were changes in the job and there i, I change my job and i bought a bought a new house i moved to a different place so there was a lot of instability in life as a result of all these things we basically uh, during this dasha the house was constructed sometime in march they started constructing the house and we got the house to our hand in at the end of july we moved in in august so during this whole period i was i was we were buying things we were adjusting to basically living in the new house during this whole year so this this year was a year, was a year of instability as you would expect from third and eighth house and finally the next month of dasha the last month of dasha in mass period the last one quarter of the period when mass will give his results what are the results what result will mass give Yeah, where is where is the house he is occupying? He will give the result of mass being in eighth house. Now, is it good or bad? Why? Because he is in his own house. He, he already had enough chances to give good result. See, let me put it this way: mass being in eighth house is bad, but mass being in own house is good. Mass being in eighth house in own house is good. So there are so many different ways of. dicing it so out of those now this period is the opportunity to opportunity for mars to give the result of just being mars in the eighth house so in this particular period health problem there can be health problems and mars being in the eighth house there can be lot of lot of problems basically it's a problematic period and what karaka is mars what charakarka is it does anybody remember amartya karaka if amartya karaka is in the eighth house is it good for career or bad for career it's it's a sabul sam period in career amatkar ka in the 8th house but the interesting thing is all the previous periods were good only when the time came for him to give the result of his placement then he showed the colors of being mass in 8th house he, for a moment he forgot that it was his own house but again it not be destruction because he is in one house you can't ignore that fact but what i am saying is all those factors will always be there but one factor will peak out during the particular period so mars being in the 8th will peak out during the period but being suppose mars was in the 8th house he was the 7th lord in 8th house suppose somebody had suppose lagna was libra and mars was the 7th lord in the 8th house taurus then it will be terrible but here it's not so terrible so like i said earlier there is a range of results possible so within that range things will bottom out so in this period mars will be simply a planet in the 8th house and he will give bad results but not very bad because he is he is in one house so can there be troubles relating to brothers because he is karaka of a brother can there be troubles relating to career because he is amat karaka so all these different things are possible i didn't have any trouble relating to brothers but i had trouble relating to career during this period in 2002 august the company that i i was working for in the previous antar dasha i left pictetel they were telling me please stay very next next one year is 6 months to one year is extremely important for pictetel please stay if you want you can work from home for say a couple of days this is going to be too far for the new house you are going to buy please stay we will give you a counter offer i said forget it no they are giving me much uh, it's not just money i said they were they are giving me more money they said we will give you how much i said no it's not money actually i want more i want to move on it's a startup they are giving me a lot of stock options so i just i just said no i'm not going to stay with pictetel i left and then I worked hard during that during a period of one and a half years. Everybody did it for the startup. Once the product was ready, they basically laid off a laid off a lot of people in the a big chunk of the engineering team at the at the company, and they went into a hibernation mode for a for a for a while. They weren't really doing that much for a for a while. Actually, one person in the class is still working at that company. Uh, so basically, I lost my job. I was laid off, and then. I was I was I I I was working from home for a company in Atlanta but again there was a lot of instability I had to travel a lot I had to I was uh, 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 more than engineering I was doing I was doing partly engineering partly managing a team in Bangalore 
and partly interfacing with the customers. So I wasn't completely happy with what I was doing. It was it was more dynamic than I want, wanted the job to be. So it was there was a lot of mass in it can also show a lot of dynamism. Mass is the planet of dynamism, and it is the house of changes. So when mass is in the eighth house, you can show a lot of changes, dynamic situations, etc. So, but I wasn't very happy. I wasn't very happy with my job. So during that period, there was some trouble in the career, but it wasn't terrible because Mars is in one house. So this is how you interpret the last part. You divide into four parts and you interpret the last one, one, one uh, the last one third. This will give the results of Airy system. So what are the results? It is the sixth, uh, sixth house from. It is a malefic sign. That is the sixth from Aru Lagna. Just as I told you earlier, planets for planets. If a malefic planet is in third or sixth from Aru Lagna, it is good. good. Yeah. If a benefic planet is in an, is in the sixth from Aru Lagna, it is bad. Third or sixth from Aru Lagna is bad for a benefic planet. Similarly, when you are looking at just signs, ignoring planets, for a benefic sign to be in the sixth or third from Aru Lagna is bad. It shows losses. Pardon? Materially. Materially. Yes. Bad in the, yes, exactly, materially. Yes. If somebody is a saint, if you are looking at the chart of a supposed saint, then benefits in the third and sixth are actually not bad. They are good. If they are merely fixed in the third or sixth from uh, Arul Lagna, during that time he will be perceived to be a materialistic person or successful material, material person. He will be perceived as not a saint. So Mercury and Jupiter or Venus in the third or sixth from Arul Lagna will give material losses or giving up material things. So it is good for a spiritual person, but materially it is bad. And for me, not exactly renunciation. Renunciation needs Sabraja Yoga. It's not renunciation, but it is being very saintly, adjusting. When somebody hits you, you don't hit them back. You said, okay, sir, I'll just go away. So that is basically Mercury or Venus or Jupiter being in the third or sixth of Arul Lagna. It's basically the image of being somebody very saintly, very soft. So that is what benefits in the third from third and sixth from Arula do. So when I said it's bad, I said from a material perspective. It depends on whenever you look at any principle based on Arudha Lagna, Arudha is about images. And images and status, they are quite material. So they depend on who you are. So they say Kala Patra will change. When you are looking from Lagna, it is the true you. So all the combinations are stationary. They don't change from time to time, place to place. But when you look at Arul Lagna, the results of various combinations are Desha, Kala, Pasha are dependent. So, male fix in the third and sixth is good materially, I said. And similarly for science also it is the same. And Aries is a male fix sign because Mars owns it. It's a male fix sign. So, Aries being in the sixth from Arul Lagna is good. So, it is good for material success. And from the Lagna itself, it is the eighth house. So being the eighth house from Lagna, it is good for occult studies, but bad for health. There can be health problems, there can be tension about health, there can be anxiety about health. So these are the results. And from Moon, Chandra Lagna, it is third house. So mentally, from the point of view of mind, it is the third house. So what are the results of third house? Communication, Pardon? Communication but I'm talking about mind. Initiative. Initiative, mind, lot of mental energy basically. At the mental level, lot of energy to do things. So that is that is another thing that you will see. So these are these are all the influences. These are these are various things you use. And also you can look at the signs that are aspecting. What are the signs that are aspecting Aries? Aquarius is aspecting sixth house, so a lot of fight. Third house is aspecting, so a lot of communication. Twelfth house is aspecting, so a lot of giving and losses. So all these results will be experienced from 2003. April to 2007 April. So during these four years, all these various results will be experienced. And again, to further divide the period of the signs into various portions and see when which result will be experienced. I don't really know any consistent principle, so I will not go into that. So when it comes to sign, you can't get further insight, further clarity, but for the large and the, and the association. You can use the principles that I outlined today and get further clarity on this. So this is something more than Antardasas Dhanjal, using Antardasas, this particular principle is something that works pretty consistently. 
So you can try it in a lot of charts. You can try always in Rasi or any, any divisional chart? Also. Any divisional chart, Narayan Dasha also this will work. We will see some examples of divisional chart, Narayan Dasha in a later class. Then you have to focus on that particular area, like career or learning or something. So we will do a few examples in a later class. But for now, go go home and look at your own chart, look at the Narayan Dasha, try to use this three parts rule and try to judge it. And you can see, by the way, you can see some information on this in Sanjay Ji's book, Narayan Dasa, and you can see some information on the Vedic Astrology Yahoo group, but don't be surprised if there are some, some inconsistencies or some, somewhere, in some places there are some changes between what I am teaching and what is already given. Sanjay Ji is very well known for intentionally giving different kinds of in, in, inputs so that people have to work hard to actually pass it and understand what is the correct knowledge. He doesn't like spoon feeding. I love spoon feeding, but Sanjay Ji hates spoon feeding. So he intentionally slightly misrepresents things in a few places. But this is basically the the most authentic uh, teaching of it to me privately. And also this is what he privately uses and this is what he taught me. And also this is what I find working in practice. So that is why I am teaching you. So don't be confused if you see something slightly different somewhere else on the, on the Yahoo group. You may see something slightly different even from me. Even though I like spoon feeding, sometimes I also used to intentionally Yeah, even recently, instead of giving four part rule, I gave it, I divided the last period into three parts and then wrote something on the very casual Yahoo group. But those who are trying to get the right knowledge will basically, they will go through everything, they will put some effort and they will get the right knowledge. But don't be confused if you see some inconsistencies. This is what works and try it in, try it in examples, okay? So with that I will end the class for today. We'll meet same time, same place next next week. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Okay.